Hello everyone, welcome back to another weekly vlog. I hope you are doing well. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're starting this vlog off at a park and ride, actually, because I just dropped Hunter off to then ride with his friend up north to a cabin. And it's actually for Hunter's friend's bachelor party. So Hunter's friend that he is riding up north with as we speak is going to be a husband soon. So that's really exciting. And it was very nice of his friend to offer to drive the both of them up there. It sounds like they're going to be doing some ice fishing and some snowmobiling and all of the, you know, bro stuff that bros do up north at a cabin. Nothing crazy, of course. We don't get with these types of men that do the strippers at the bachelor parties. That's not the vibe here. That should never be the vibe, at least in my opinion. That's a hot topic. We're literally starting with such a hot topic right now, but I just feel like it's such a bare minimum, like a self-respect thing. And every woman is different. Every woman feels differently. But as a woman of God, that shouldn't be happening. So definitely going to miss him, but feeling very much comfortable about the whole situation. Plus I'm going over to my family home for the weekend. So I'm not just spending it alone. And that will be really fun to just catch up and hang out and have that extended time. Because typically now when I go, it's always one with Hunter or two for a short period of time. I did spend the night there over Christmas, over that kind of time period. But other than that, besides holidays and like special occasions, or times like this where Hunter is gone, I don't really spend the night there much anymore, which is kind of sad, but it'll be definitely a good time. So I'm gonna actually head over there right away right now from this park and ride. I have my weekend bag packed, all ready to go right behind me. So I'm just going to hit the road and I will talk to y'all shortly and keep you updated. <sighs> I just managed to the park and ride where Hunter is going to be dropped off by his friend and the husband-to-be. Obviously, I'm super excited to see him. I'm always excited to see him, but we've been texting all weekend, so that helped. And being with family was super, super nice. It's always nice to have that extended time with them. Friday night when I got there, we went out to dinner to the cutest little Italian place. We got some cheesy bread, a pizza, and a tiramisu for dessert to try, and it was really good. We'll definitely be back to that particular restaurant. Saturday was a big sports day. The Milwaukee Bucks played at two that day. They won, luckily. And then, so unfortunately, the Packers came really, really close to being the 49ers. They really got my hopes up and then, you know, but for them to have made it as far as they did this season, being such a young team, I'm happy with. I'll take it. And then today, which is Sunday, we basically just had a lazy day at home, which was really nice. My mom and I watched The Bachelorette charity season, which has been out for a while now, I think. We used to watch The Bachelorette and The Bachelor and all of that all the time. But again, since I haven't been there very often, and most of the time when I am there, it's full family activities, we don't really keep up to date with it. So it was nice to just watch a few episodes. And I'm sure we'll continue separately and kind of, you know, chat about it. Hunter should be pulling up any minute now. I think that's them actually. Here they come. So I'll talk to you in a bit. So I've been wanting to try the Duncan Iced Pink Velvet Macchiato. I feel like this has potential to be really good, but I feel like they just did not put enough of the syrup in there or the sauce or whatever they use. I think I'm giving today's Duncan experience a six out of 10. I hate to do it to them, but that's the brutally honest truth. I've been meaning to update you all on the whole gym membership situation I spoke about in my Christmas vlog. I mentioned that Hunter and I were having some trouble trying to cancel our membership and get documentation of the fact that it was canceled. We finally went in there and spoke to a manager and he emailed us documentation, like an actual contract. In my membership portal, it still says my membership is active, which is super weird, but I'm just hopeful that things are just gonna work out. And if not, I'll have that document to fall back on. I was expecting to have to have this hard conversation with the gym manager myself, but Hunter actually was like, I'll just do it. You don't worry about it. I'll just do the talking. And some women may not like that, but for me, I was like, okay, soft girl era. I will be the soft girl today. And I feel like that one experience of him taking the lead and doing like the hard thing and you know, the tough communication really made me realize that in today's society, I feel like the boss woman is so romanticized and so sought after. Like as a woman in today's society, people expect you to hold your own and to be independent and be strong. 
but there's something about having your man just take charge of the situation so you don't even have to worry and you can sit back and rest in your feminine a little bit. Every woman is going to be different and have different opinions, but for me, it was just a new experience. I feel like most of the time I have to handle my own stuff. So to just have it handled was different and pleasant. I feel like such a new woman with my little Apple Watch on my wrist again, finally. I've taken a break from her. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but I don't know, for some reason, I just haven't been motivated to wear it. But lately I'm trying to kind of rekindle that relationship with her. I've been really enjoying counting my steps and using that as kind of a measurement of how active I am as opposed to, you know, one workout a day type of thing. And the watch really helps with that. This just tastes like milk and espresso, if I'm being completely honest. Now that we have our Duncan, I think I'm gonna head home. I wanna do a little Bible study with y'all today before I start my work day. I just had an amazing Bible study the other day and I really want to share the passages that I read so I want to get right into that as soon as we head home and then later tonight I think Hunter and I might do a little date night and I think the Milwaukee Bucks play and I don't know if their new coach is going to be stepping in Wisconsin sports right now is you know it's it's a lot right now Joe Barry Packers defensive coordinator fired Adrian Griffin Bucks head coach fired I think in the same week but let's cut the show and go home and Bible study all right, let's get into our word. You'll have to excuse my washer. I just started it without thinking through that I would be talking. Just like pretend it's the ocean or something type of thing. Now, the actual part of the Bible I wanna chat with y'all about today is in 1 Samuel. There are a lot of things that I have kind of picked up on within this chapter. And when I read the Bible, I really try to just kind of think for myself a little bit. It can be hard because sometimes I feel like I misunderstand things or I just, I feel like I should be getting an inkling, you know, of an idea when I read a certain passage. And then when I don't, I feel like I need to go and look up what other people are saying. But I really lately have been trying not to do that because my relationship with Jesus grows the strongest when I don't look to outside opinion. A great example is that the world can give you so much evidence that God isn't real. But the thing that keeps me so rooted in God and in my faith in him is my personal relationship with him, the personal communication I've had just between me and him. And honestly, all of those instances where I've just felt him and his presence so strongly, those are the moments that have made me into a strong believer. And I just wish that everybody could have those instances where they just see him listening to them and answering their prayers so, so clearly. You just have to have the right vision. You just have to have the right intention. You have to be looking for it in the right places. All that being said, to just say that what I take from this section of the Bible may be completely different from what anyone else may have taken from this section. Basically, the moments we are looking at are when Saul is made the leader of Israel. And Saul came to power because the people of Israel demanded that they needed a leader, that they needed a king to lead them. And Samuel and the Lord are both kind of just like, hello? Who saved you from Egypt? You know, like, why do you need another idol to look to when the Lord is right here, when the Lord walks with you? Which, to go off on a super small tangent, this isn't even what I was planning on talking about, but it is interesting because people today, people now are always seeking someone to look to, someone to admire, someone to basically worship. And many times that's not Jesus. Many times that's not the Lord our God. Right now, something I've been struggling with is my health, my wellness, my fitness, my diet, my just overall well-being. I'm trying to overcome an unhealthy lifestyle. And it's just funny because we as humans in this world have the choice to either look to God for this help to bring us through these tough times of trial, or we can look to people, our families, our friends, influencers, just people we don't even know, but that we can see on the internet. And I think a lot of times, a lot of people, including myself, will turn to those people of the world before they will turn to our God, which is just kind of crazy. Because like, why, why would we turn to something or someone that has no idea what is in store for us? instead of the person that literally knows what's coming next, what is at every threshold of our lives. So in a way, a lot of the world is like the people of Israel, where we have a king, we have this everlasting love, this everlasting forgiveness and grace through the, the one and only king, the name above all names. And yet we want to turn to a mere human being who isn't any better than the rest of us, you know? Anyway, to actually get to the scripture that I was intending to speak about today, 
before I got a little carried away. First Samuel chapter 14, basically to give you some context of what's going on from my interpretation. This king, this new leader that Israel demanded that they have appointed, Saul, is leading the Israelites into battle. In this chapter, Jonathan, who is the son of Saul, tells a young man who carried his armor, is what the scripture says, let us, you know, move a little bit. Let's move away from where everyone else is at, basically. And Jonathan says to this young man who's carrying his armor, let us go and face our opponent. And Jonathan says, we will cross over to the men and we will show ourselves to them. If they say to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and we will not go up to them. But if they say, come up to us, then we will go up for the Lord has given them into our hand and this shall be the sign to us. So both of them, just the two men, went and approached this army of their opponent. And guess what happened? The scripture says, they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed them after him. And there was a panic in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. Let's just talk about this for a second, okay? First of all, when we read this, we're first like, um, what? What? Like two men, two men going up against a whole army of men. And this army just falls at their feet. There was absolutely no logical reason for this whole army to surrender like this to two men. But faith knows no logic. We serve a God who does miracles. How did this miracle happen? By having faith in the Lord. Jonathan chose to have faith in the Lord rather than a king or a leader. And behold, he gives the opponent into his hands. And I think the reason that this really resonated with me and what's cool about the Bible is that anytime you read it, you're always going to have a different perspective or perception on different stories and different scriptures. It's always going to be different depending on what stage of life you're in. And for me in my current stage, which like I said, I'm struggling with my health. I'm trying to live a more upright, godly, disciplined life and take better care of my body. And I think going through a weight loss journey is really tough because there are so many people that want to have something to say about it on social media, on the internet, everywhere. You have so many people like talking in your ear, basically telling you, do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. Oh, definitely don't do that. Oh, you probably shouldn't do that, but it's up to you. It's just a lot. And because of all of these perspectives, all of these opinions, it's very hard for me personally to feel like I'm doing enough sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I'm doing too little. And then when I feel like I wanna step it up, I feel like maybe that's too much because there is just this whole like body positive culture, this whole like soft motivation, I wanna call it, that has been populating the internet lately that just kind of goes against discipline and living an upright godly life. And so this story really helped put it into perspective that I need to stop listening to all of these voices. I need to stop looking for an idol or a leader to follow, to go to for help and advice. I need to go to God. I need to go to God. And some days are better than others. Some days I will prioritize him and I will go to him. But then the next day I will go and click on a YouTube video of here's how I did it. I just need to follow him and I need to have that bold faith. I need to pray those bold prayers that he can make it happen. It doesn't matter if maybe I feel like I'm not doing enough. If he wants to make it happen, he will make it happen. I need to trust in what the Lord is telling me to do and not what other people are telling me to do or what the world says I should do. It's simple as that. The Lord says that we should not be gluttonous. We should not idolize food. We should remain active. We should not be lazy. Therefore, I need to be more conscious of what I'm eating, what I'm putting in my body, in what amounts. And I need to stop living such a sedentary lifestyle. I need to force myself out of that a little bit.
I just got back from Target and I got a bunch of groceries. I thought I would just show y'all really quick as some grocery inspo. I haven't done a grocery haul in a while. I'm gonna try to start with the frozen stuff because that needs to be put away. I got some frozen pizzas. I got a bunch because there was a sale going on. If you buy a certain number, you get money off. So these ones are my favorites and probably always will be. But Hunter always wants me to get the Jack's Supreme. He claims that this is a dinner pizza and this is a lunch pizza and there's a difference. Is there truly a difference? I don't know but I got these for him. For me, I actually got some homestyle turkey meatballs because I really want to meal prep these. They're microwavable. I just figure in a pinch, this would be a good balanced option. I got some tilapia fillets for a dinner for Hunter and I one of these nights. I love fish. We don't have it enough. It's so good for you. It's so tasty. So we're gonna make it this week. And then I always love to have some frozen veggies on deck to serve on the side of different meals. All right, now for the cold stuff. I got some Parmesan cheese. Hunter and I have been making our own Alfredo sauce at home lately and it is delicious. And this is one of the ingredients that we needed to re-up on. My mom recently made a crock pot mac and cheese and it was so good, chef's kiss. So I wanted to recreate it here at home. I needed three eight ounce blocks of cheddar, one eight ounce block of cream cheese, two cups of whole milk, and some other things that I already have, but I just needed those few ingredients. While I was in the cheese section, I got some Mexican style cheese. This is perfect for tacos, wraps, literally anything that we make with cheese. Tortillas, we've been out for a while and we use them again for like tacos, wraps, quesadillas, things like that. I got some chocolate milk and we usually don't buy chocolate milk but Hunter is in accounting and it is period end right now and he's been having a very busy week so far. He doesn't get to have any days remote this week. So I wanted to surprise him with this and some muffins, which we'll make together after I finish this haul. Also grabbed some brownie mix because it's always nice to just have and we don't have a box in the house right now. You just never know when you'll be craving a little sweet treat like this. Chocolate chip cookies for the same reason. These are the best kind. These are the Nestle Toll House chocolate chip lovers. The last cold item I grabbed, I believe, is this Chobani Greek yogurt in the flavor of vanilla. I got this because I want to try to make a low calorie, like healthy alternative type of dessert. You take one of these and you mix it with this Jell-O banana cream pudding mix. And then you top it with vanilla wafers and some banana slices. Here are some bananas for that. Oh, this is also for that mac and cheese recipe, evaporated milk. I got a singular lemon to use with the tilapia I bought. Some Granny Smith apples because my mom sent me something that said apparently these do wonders for migraines and I get those around the time of my period. So I really wanna try. Worst case scenario, they'll be a nice, good, healthy snack. I got a bunch of little canned bevies. I'm about to put y'all on to the best sips for the mornings, for that little caffeine boost moment the Alani New Energy drinks. These are the best four flavors. You do not want to buy any other flavor except for these four. Breezeberry, a nice like sour blue raspberry moment. Blue Slush, very similar to this one, but a little bit sweeter, not quite as sour and tart. The New Kimade, a strawberry lemonade. I mean, come on. Dream Float, Dreamsicle orange soda float in an energy drink. These go down so easy and they're so yummy. They're like a little treat to start your day with or whenever you need to pick me up, love. Now for the evenings with dinner, of course, Olipop. I will say I'm a big poppy fan as well, but I just bought a big variety pack from Costco a while ago, so I'm good on those. But I really like Olipop also, so I like to have both in the house if I'm able to. My top two flavors, Vintage Cola and Dr. Goodwin. Coke dupe, Dr. Pepper dupe, okay? Like soda, but better for you. More benefits, less additives. And I love these two as opposed to the poppy versions because they're so sweet and yummy. And if I could pick, I would probably pick these over the poppy versions. I did get two new flavors to try today. I have the tropical punch and the ginger ale. We shall see. Last, I got some other miscellaneous things. I got some Q-tips, cotton swabs, a can opener, cause ours actually broke on us while we were trying to use it to make dinner last night. And then I got a few self-care items for myself. I got some supplements. First, I got these Nature Made High Absorption Magnesium Citrate Gummies. I've been trying to take magnesium for a while now because it supposedly helps with migraines, which I, again, deal with when I'm on my period. But I have them in pill form, and for some reason, I'm just not motivated to take them. I'm a gummy girl through and through. It's gotta be gummies. If it's not gummies, I don't want it. So I'm gonna try this, and hopefully this will help me stay on it more consistently. And then I got two supplements from Ali. I got the probiotic and prebiotic, which I'm going to make Hunter take also because I think he needs it. He's got sensitive tummy is what we like to say. And then I got these Hello Happy Gummy Worms. This has vitamin D in it, which is something I've heard also helps with the hormonal imbalances that occur when you're on birth control 
and take the placebo pills, which is what I currently do. For a while, I tried skipping the greens and just going from pack to pack to pack. And for the first month, it was pleasant, but then I started to have unpredictable spotting and I just, I, it was messing with me a little bit. I didn't like having that unpredictability. This is just a re-up. This is my Dr. Bronner's unscented baby soap. I use this for the downstairs area. And then last, I picked up this little bio oil skincare oil. This is supposed to help improve the appearance of scars and stretch marks, even out skin tone, help with aging and dehydrated skin, things like that. So I actually got this because I gained a lot of weight in the past like year, year and a half now maybe. I've developed some stretch marks kind of on my lower stomach area as well as kind of on my hips and there are tons of reviews saying that this actually helps kind of fade their appearance my marks are currently in their like reddish purple phase so i believe that means you can still fade them more easily so i figure i should start something like this now obviously i'm also trying to get healthy and lose the weight that i gained over the past year and a half but now that the stretch marks are there they're here to stay so that is everything i'm gonna put all of this away and then like i said we're gonna make these so we can surprise hunter when he gets home from work shortly Hunter was dealing with some sort of stomach bug all weekend long, which we think is food poisoning just based on his symptoms and the fact that I have not dealt with anything similar. He's already recovered. He's going into work today feeling just fine, back to normal. He did lose nine pounds though, which is crazy. He was just really curious because he was excreting so much during the time and all the fun things that come with a stomach bug. He basically did fast. He couldn't really eat a lot. So what happened was Friday night, he went to bed feeling literally fine, feeling like himself, no concern whatsoever. And then all of a sudden at 3 a.m. I wake up to him throwing up. And this went on like once to twice every hour until the morning. So throughout early, early Saturday into Saturday afternoon a little bit, he was throwing up literally like once every hour. He probably threw up a total of like maybe 15 times. Like it was a lot, maybe less than that. That might be an exaggeration, but it was definitely more than 10. For a while he was throwing up and on the toilet at the same time and then after that he kind of transitioned into just being on the toilet no more throwing up but he could not keep food down really at all on saturday so he basically did a full fast on saturday we tried a banana in the morning that didn't go well he ate a slice and he said he just did not he wasn't feeling it and then he had a piece of toast and that he did keep down but that was like his dinner and then other than that it was just a lot of fluids of course into sunday he was feeling much better just a little fatigued so we just took that as another rest day it was a very lazy weekend for me but my sleep schedule definitely took a hit a little bit which his did too obviously and i don't mind because you can't control that and i'm not mad at all but i mean when he was up i was up and i was definitely babying him maybe more than necessary but that's okay he appreciates it so you know but i kind of debated not coming in today because i was just like i need one more day this weekend was not a weekend i'm sorry and he was like profusely apologizing for ruining my weekend and i was like please don't ever feel like you need to apologize to me for that that is just not necessary so yeah i'm wearing my glasses today because I don't know, I think I low-key have an eye infection. I don't know what's going on. They're just really itchy and they're like excreting a lot of eye gunk stuff. So I just did not want to mess with it. I didn't want to put my contacts in because those kind of caused more irritation when I tried it yesterday. But yeah, we're here today. I'm feeling totally fine. I have had no symptoms at all from him. But yeah, we are here today to get this work day in. So I'm going to actually close out this vlog right here because I feel like it's time. All right, I'm sorry, the parking guy was walking around, so I <laughs> took down my camera because I was just embarrassed. So if the angle has changed, sorry. But anyways, yes, I'm gonna close out this vlog right here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for the past like week or two. It's probably been like two weeks. Thanks for being here. I hope you're well. I hope you have a great week ahead. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna continue to hang out with me. Definitely drop a comment down below because I love talking with you guys. I will respond. I will have a full conversation with you if you let me, but I'll see you in the next one.